speaking up and speaking out become the hallmarks of this uh, stage that I nickname the Fuck You 50s. Because for the most part, most of us have been very well behaved until this point in our lives. So I think one of the habits that we have to break is the habit of not putting ourselves on our to-do list. It's not a question of neglecting people you used to take care of, but it's a question of taking care of yourself. The airline oxygen mask is a wonderful example because they always tell you that if the oxygen masks drop down, you should put your own on before you try to help anybody else. And the truth of the matter is, if you are breathing creative and energizing oxygen, you will be better able to love and care for the people around you as well as yourself. During stressful times, and we all have them, one of the things that I found I had to do was to look after myself before I could look after anybody else. I took care of myself in small ways and it made a big, big, big difference to me. And this was during the period when I was transitioning from being a wife with a full-time job to being a widow with a self-employed job and two children, including one with a disability. I found that if I didn't take care of myself, I couldn't take care of anybody else. So I did little things that made me feel really good. And when I was about 50, I had had enough of stationary bikes and treadmills that didn't go anywhere, and I looked around to find what else there was to do and I found this class called NIA. I had never heard of it before, but I looked in and people were having such a good time. They were going back and forth across the room, and what I really noticed is that everyone was smiling. So I thought, I'll try this. And NIA is a fitness and lifestyle practice that incorporates martial arts, dance arts, and healing arts. I, I do a, lo a lot of NIA with my eyes closed, actually, because I go deep inside myself and my body releases and I do tap into this complete joy of movement and music and community. I've made really wonderful friends through Mia. It's empowered me in a way that, um, that the kind of workouts I used to do never did. Um, it gives me a way of connecting with my body, uh, again with my mind and my spirit, and with the community of women. Um, that's a beautiful experience. And everybody I talked to at a, in every interview sooner or later said, I couldn't have gotten through this, I couldn't have enjoyed this, I couldn't have thought of this if it weren't for my women friends. I have a theory about women and friendship and men and friendship. I think that women's friendships are substantially different from men's. Women uh, form close, intimate relationships with one another fairly easily, um, not instantly, and it's, it has to build on a lot, but it, but it is something that we do comfortably. Men, not so much. And I think men are, can't even begin to understand what it is that women give to each other. I think um, uh, most men have friends, they consider close friends, but they're not the intimate relationship that women have with one another. That, I think, is why men have to marry women. There has to be one person in their life with whom they can have a really close, intimate relationship.